morning. Good morning, everyone. Hey, let's stand together. Uh, let me just kind of say, I don't, I'm not usually up here at this time, but uh, this is this is the long weekend, and so uh, lots of folks are taking advantage of that. And so some are out this morning. I got here this morning and realized that you guys up here, you were doing well, but I said, you know what? I found a microphone, and before I knew it, it was on. And so I'm going to sing this morning. I haven't done that in a long time uh, during the praise and worship time. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Let's, let's take a moment and pray. Father, thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today and celebrate the King of Kings. Our God is awesome and great. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're getting help on the platform today. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you Is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God. Into the darkness you shine. There's no one like you, none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome with power. Our God, our God. Our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. We worship you today, Lord. We celebrate you. We tell of your goodness. stop us and if our god is with us then what can stand against and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what can stand against Stay! 
Join that concert. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness and your grace. We exalt you today. You're exalted over all. Amen. Great words of these songs today. They're the sermon. Set your heart upon the cross. You'll never know the sacrifice you made for all our sin. For all our sin and all our shame, you took the nails. You took. 
took our place. No one else could do what you have done. One name is higher. One, one name is stronger than any grave, than any Savior of the world. You're reigning now, the Savior of the world. Your name is higher. One name is stronger. The name Mercy endures to all generations, and your truth is forever. Heaven and earth may pass away, but Lord, your word is forever settled, and your name is exalted above your word. Father, we just thank you because of that name is stronger today. Father, we just speak that name of Jesus for every situation, every family need, every financial need, every, every problem that people are facing in their business or their career. Father, we just sing this week, you do wonders and work, work your way in the, the lives of families and people. And we're praying for it again right now in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Come on, everybody said amen. Why don't you turn to your neighbor. Now this is going to be important later on. Turn to your neighbor. Say something good about the Lord, would you? Just say something good about the Lord. And then say something good about them. Even if you have to stare at them for a while and think, say something good about them. Seems like I was just up here. <laughs> well, I haven't done that in a long time. That was fun. You know, I actually was singing a lot during 
preparation. Yeah, we're excited. That's good, isn't it? That's good. I've got a couple granddaughters going to be running up here for a long. That's right. And uh, they're fun. I got one here today, and, and Caroline just smiled when she saw me. Yeah. And then she cried when they said they were going to go out during the preaching. Bless her heart. <laughs> well, you know what? In all my excitement, did I leave my, uh, <laughs> I don't have my notes here at all. I, <laughs> I'm excited, man. I, I, I came in here and, and, and look and see if I left my notes on my desk. If, if not, I, I'll uh, download them real quick from, on my phone. <laughs> I brought them here uh, yesterday, spent a long time here yesterday evening, and, and we're working on things. Uh, working, uh, walking to the uh, parking lot, praying. Yes, I should have took time and put my notes in my, in my binder. But uh, uh, I was walking uh, the parking lot praying last evening and, and just, uh, man, just feeling like, you ever felt like God's up to something? You know, you feel like just God's doing something and, and you don't know exactly what it is, but you, you know it. Have you saved the day? Okay. You know what? This, uh, this is this. Do you want to you wanna preach them? You could take them. If it parks in here where I say something good about my wife, you could just say something good about your husband. That would work. Okay, well, thanks for being here today. Thanks for all those who are joining in. I know there, there are many people who do every week, and we thank you for that. And your communication to us, uh, whether it's a prayer request or just a, a thumbs up or a like that, or just a comment, hey, I'm joining in today, that means a lot to, to those who are helping make it all possible and and so uh, th those are encouraging things, and we appreciate that. But almost every week someone tells us that they're, they're listening in, <clears throat> and we hope you'll be blessed today. We're in a series. <clears throat> We're going to finish it next week. That's our plan anyway. <clears throat> we could go on and on with it because Jesus talked about it a long, a long time. In fact, all his ministry basically was dealing with this one subject, and that is the kingdom of God. I'm not going to go back through all those things relative to that, but we said every kingdom has a few things, and one of the things every kingdom has to have is a king. And, and so we've been talking about look, the king. We, we sang it today, our God, uh, uh, water you turned into wine, first line. I opened the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you, there's none like you. <clears throat> our God is greater, our God is stronger. We're talking about that king and uh, the past uh, last week and this week uh, and some next week we're going to talk about the word of the king and and so we kind of got part way through the outline yesterday or, or last Sunday uh, and and I want to uh, I want to kind of pick up pick up on where we are uh, first let me say uh, uh, you know give honor where honor is due and I noticed yesterday Donnie uh, and, and Charlie won overall uh, Superior in their band, uh, uh, wherever they were, and man, that's just that's great, and we honor them. I think that's the second overall superior they've received in the band competitions they've been in, and that's a lot of hard work, and it means they're doing a good job. And we, uh, that, you, you're, you've been a band director for many years, you know what that's like. There's a lot of work involved in that, and and then um, Lexi, Lex, uh, uh, Lexi was uh, she, yesterday. She won the at the was it the state fair? She won the grand, the grand champion fiddle player or whatever, Mississippi, and well, of course she did. I mean, <coughs> she played, and so yeah. So we celebrate her. She's trying to haul the trophy home this morning. So <coughs> uh, yeah, well, how how incredible that is, and and we get to we can be blessed with that uh, with their music here uh, almost every week, and so uh, what a blessing that is. There are other things too. We've got some uh, events we're going to talk to you about soon but uh, that are coming up. We're excited about uh, family gatherings, some things for us to do uh, as, as a family. Uh, but let's, let's talk about the king and the kingdom for a moment. Because, look, listen, um, there's a balance in everything, okay? There's, there's a balance, or there should be a balance in our lives. We, we, uh, the Bible said body exercise profits little. And that and, and means, you, you know, that helps a little bit, uh, but that's not all we need to do. 
and, and taking care of our finances is important, but that's not all we need to be concerned with. Uh, y your marriage is important, but y you've got to go to work too. And so it's not all one thing. There's a balance in our lives. There's a lot of things. We've got kids that, that uh, have places to go, and we have to be part of their lives and our grandkids' lives, but that's not all that there is in our world, so we need a balance. <clears throat> and part of the balance is, is realizing we are the apple of his eye. And he, uh, John said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. So there's, there's things we focus, we see God has something for us. God is a good God. We sing, you're a good, good father. And a good father loves to give good things to his kids. But there's also another area that we're kind of in now when we're talking about the king and the kingdom where we realize it's not all always about us. In fact, it really isn't about us. It's, it's not our story. His story is his story. Okay? And, and so... If you never get another thing, you still, you and I still are worship God. And, and so we are, we are thankful and we're grateful, but he's great and greatly to be praised if we lived in the direst of situations in, and were persecuted for our faith. He's still worthy to be praised, okay? We don't praise him just because everything's good. We praise him in the storm. We praise him when things aren't because he's king and the king's to be honored. doesn't matter what the subjects are going through, the king is to be honored. And, and so consider, as we're looking at this, that God loves us, and he loves us enough that Jesus Christ comes and sheds his sinless blood for us. What it did for you and I is incredible. And we talk about what benefits we have. But he, the Bible said, purchased the church, Acts 20 28, with his own blood. The church was purchased with his own blood. Uh, he ever purchased something? Look, he made an investment, and, and he wants an ROI. He wants a return on his investment. And, and so he didn't just buy the church for the church just to receive, receive. He had an investment in us. And we pay that investment back in part as we praise and honor him and we serve him and we carry out. When we pray and enact thy kingdom come, thy will be done, he's getting a return on the investment. that make any sense to you? Okay. With that in mind, let's look, let me, give me one minute or two minutes and let's kind of catch up with where we uh, were last week without going through the whole series, of course. <clears throat> we said uh, those with authority... It's not in your outline, but those with authority, uh, and we all have a measure of authority in some way, uh, we have a different measure of authority when we speak from that position of authority. And we liken, uh, we spoke about specifically a judge who's in his robe, in his courtroom, in his judge's seat. He has an authoritative word there that he doesn't have when he goes home. In fact, some of us, with some of the problems we've encountered in life, we may be a, a, a police officer during the day, but when we go home, we, we, we're not the police officer there. We, you understand? You may have a high authority in your business or in your position, but if you're not operating in that position, you still have influence and respect as a judge, but you don't have the same authoritative word when you're not in that position. Same with an umpire. We said umpire at a game has tremendous authority with what he rules. But he goes to visit another game. He's not umpire of that game, so he doesn't have the same authority. He, even though he's a head umpire of the whole league, it doesn't matter where he's at. He can deal with it later, but right now, his word is not the word, the, the word of authority. Does that make sense to you? I hope it does, because we've got to go. Okay, we said that about kings. Kings, we see, most of us only see kings when they're operating in their kingly role. But they've got a life and a family, and we, we, we said, you know, when... When it comes to naming the puppy, they can have influence, but the four-year-old might win that argument. And you name the puppy what the four-year-old wants. Because even though he's king, that doesn't mean that his word is everything in all situations. And then we talked about God. And, and well, surely what God says is, and there's no arguing with it. No, that's not the case. And, and so we said there are a couple of times we, we want to draw out. Uh, there's a time that the key, when God speaks and his follow-through is contingent upon the response of people. And, and we went to the potter's house in Jeremiah 18, 
And he says specifically, at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation, concerning a people, and, and, and I say I'm going to bring judgment on it. If that nation and people repent, then God says I will, I will relent of what I said I'd do, and I'm going to bring, bring blessing upon them. And then the inverse of, the, uh, of that is, is what happened. Now, and we talked about Hezekiah, and we talked about another example or two. Uh, then we said there's a time when God speaks with a decree. And God, when he does, he often uses covenant language. And, and he makes it clear that this is a, this is binding. There, there, there's, there's nothing arbitrary about this. This is the way it is. And, and we were uh, halfway through this passage in, in Hebrews 6, I think, when we quit uh, last week. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself. Remember, so help me God, so help me me, God said. Because there's no, he looks around, there is none greater. And so he says, he couldn't find any greater to swear by. He swore by himself. And that's when he says, as surely as I live, that's God's way of saying, mark it down, this is going to happen. I don't care what else happens. Heaven and earth pass away, but my word's not going to pass away. This is going to remain. <clears throat> and, 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 there, and there's a lot of angles to go here. I'm going to cover part of that this week and part of it next week. Uh, and so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by something by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. We take the oath. I swear to God. Don't say that. Uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the Bible says, swear not by heaven is his uh, uh, throne, the earth is his footstool. Let you wear a yea be yea and your nay be nay. <clears throat> but when we take an oath, uh, of office, when we, uh, I, I swear to tell the truth, and some of us use the word affirm, I, and that, that's accepted, because we don't want to swear, so we say, I affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. And we're calling on God as our witness that what we're doing and saying is indeed the truth. But he says man does that, uh, and, and that's supposed to say, well, that's, that's the case. But because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what he was what he had promised, he confirmed it with an oath. And understand, when he confirms it with an oath, now we're in what's called an irrevocable decree. <clears throat> and, and, and we're going to see next week another example or two and, and show you some other areas besides numbers where we're going to spend most of our time in thought today. Uh, that there are times that God speaks this about other areas of our life. Okay, uh, uh, Psalm 148, let's just leave the rest of that and go to Psalm 148. And the, a little scripture there says, And he, God, established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. A decree that will never pass away. So uh, let me say this, and I'll deal with it more next week, perhaps. What you want God to speak in your life is not just to have conversation with you. There's a good time for that. But when you've got a need, when you've got a situation that you need God to be God, to do only what God can do as God. You want him to speak with a decree in your situation. You want God, and, and I'm going to show you how that happens, okay? Uh, Numbers chapter 14, uh, it's, a, it's a good chapter. It's a little troubling uh, chapter. Uh, God had been so good to Israel. He had, they had seen him do some miraculous things. They saw him part the sea. And they walked across the Red Sea on dry ground, and they, and they saw the, the Red Sea come back up and, and overtake and, and drown the, the pursuing uh, army of Pharaoh, the Egyptian army. <clears throat> but, you know, some of us, we forget pretty quick what God's done for us. Any of you have that problem? I mean, Thanksgiving's coming up, but how many of you ever had a time you said, you know, I hadn't been as thankful as I should have been. I just really haven't. Well, <clears throat> these people... Like, the, like all of us, they, they forgot. And that night, they were, they were at a place where they had sent some spies out. They, spent, uh, they sent uh, some spies out to, to check out the land and, of Canaan. And they, were, they were about to go in and take it, and the people came back, and they brought back some grapes. And the Bible said they had one cluster, two of them had to bear it on a, on a staff. I mean, just, I mean, that's, that's those big grapes. And they said, this is the fruit. This is, this is what the land's like. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. This is an incredible place. But the people that live there are giants. In fact, what they said was, we were, 
grasshoppers in their sight. We were grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in theirs. They, they saw themselves, and they just put that as, well, they must see us that way too. And, and when you see yourself as a grasshopper, you don't feel like you're able to do it. These are giants, and we can't overtake them. Man, what God had done, what they had seen God do, I mean, the Lord said, I'll send hornets before you. I'll, I'll get rid of them. I'll tell you, when the hornets get after you, I don't care how big you are. Like the song said, you got to move, you got to move. When the hornets come buzzing, you got to move. That's kind of a rewritten old song. <clears throat> so uh, th this is where we are. Numbers 14, that night all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, if only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our why, you see how we take things that aren't true and we build them up and make them as though they're true? Who said you're going to die? Who said you're going to fall to the sword? Wouldn't, wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to uh, each other, they started talking and said, well, let's choose us a leader and go back to Egypt. Well, this is really good when you're Moses the leader. I, I've been in that position. You know, they used to have a cat, had two bills, said, I, I'm their leader. Which way did they go? <clears throat> And, and, and that's kind of where, where Moses is. And, and, and so he's the leader, and you know, he's trying to motivate the people. Let's go. Let's go. We can take this. Let's, let's, let's pursue. Let's, let's take the land. And the people are all talking about, hey, let's have an election. Let's choose a leader and let him take us back to Egypt. And Moses and Aaron, regardless of their feelings, fell face down in front of the whole assembly, uh, Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephana, who were among those who explored the land, <clears throat> tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord's pleased with us, he'll lead us to that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and give it to us only. Do, don't rebel against the Lord, please. And don't be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Well, you know, let, 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 me, let me tell you something. Some of you have the gift of encouragement. And when things look a little negative, you know, really what you, what you need is not somebody come on and say, boy, it is bad, and I tell you, I think we can get worse. You need, you need somebody come on and say, you know, but God is with us. But God's for us. If God is for us, then who can stop us? If God be with us, then what can stand against? That's what we're saying today. Now, this is important. You know what we sing those words? Because we need, we need to be the Joshua. Those are Joshua words. Those are Caleb words. Those are words that remind us that no matter what you're going through, if God's for you, who's going to stop you? If God's with you, who can stand against? And so hearing those words is like hearing the words of Joshua and Caleb. Maybe you're making a business decision. Maybe you're making a family purchase decision. Maybe you've got these, what do we do? Are we going to make it? Oh, they talk about what's going to happen in, in six months. And nine months. Okay, but if God be for us, who can stop us? Those are words that, that you need to hear. And so we sing those words, and, and, and we explain more about the, the significance and power of choosing words like that to sing because it, it has an effect upon us. <clears throat> so we go back now to uh, verse 10. But the whole assembly... Instead of responding, saying, yeah, everybody stand up and cheer. Sarah, you were a pom, uh, 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 you were a cheerleader. Yeah, you weren't a pom-pom. You, were, you held pom-poms. You, you, she was a cheerleader, and I, I, how many of y'all believe that? Amen. I believe that. I hadn't seen the picture, but I believe that with all my heart. She's still a cheerleader today. And, 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 and so they got finished with their, their big cheer, and, and they, and man, it, they, They'd said it as well as you could say it, and, and they waved the pom-poms, and, and when they were done, here's the response. But the whole assembly talked about stoning them. <laughs> that one didn't work. <laughs> you know, it always depresses me when I hear people talking about stoning me. That's just, that's just kind of a downer right there, isn't it? And then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting to all the Israelites, and it wasn't a good show up of his glory either. And the Lord said to Moses, now look, the Lord said, and here we got the king talking, Okay. I want you to realize this is God talking. This isn't, this isn't Moses' little buddy over here saying, I'll tell you what I think, and I'll tell you what I do. Listen to what the king says. The Lord 
said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe me in spite of all the signs I have performed against them? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them. But I will make you into a nation greater and stronger than they. Does God mean what he says? I don't know. I don't know. It seems like he's upset. I don't want God upset at me. You know, David said, Lord, vex me not in thy sore displeasure. I think it's Psalm 3. Vex me not in thy sore displeasure. You know what that means? Don't hit me when you're mad. That means count to, well, 10 would be enough for him. Count to whatever you've got to count to and, and, and chill a little bit, cool down. So the Lord said, you know, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I will strike them down with a plague. And Moses said to the Lord, now listen, what I want you to see here, see a few things. One of them is, is that what God was looking for was an intercessor. And you know, my mother was an intercessor. Some of you in this room are, are intercessors. You've prayed for your family. Mamas and grandmamas are especially notorious for being intercessors. Pastors are intercessors. Some people have a gift of intercession. Can I just say to you, and you listen at home, some of us aren't here because we look both ways before we cross every street. Some of us did so many dumb things on our bikes and motorbikes and cars. God, it's the grace of God and the prayers of some intercessors that's kept us here. Give honor where honor is due. I, I believe that. Oh, look, oh, let me, let me, okay, 30 seconds here, a little parenthesis. Remember the other day when I talked about that fig tree that, they passed by on the side of the road, and Jesus said, let no fruit grow and thee henceforward forever. And the next day they came by, it was withered from the roots up. Remember, said something happens to the unseen when the king speaks. There was another fig tree that the owner of the, fig, uh, uh, of the vineyard came, and he talked to the guy who was the, vi the dresser for the vineyard, and he said, cut this tree down. It's not bearing any fruit. And the dresser, the guy who worked for the owner, said, give me another year with it. I've been working on it. Give me another year and, and let, me, let me see. I think we'd get some fruit out. If you, uh, uh, the difference between that tree not being cut down and this other tree that was immediately cursed and destroyed was one of them was in a vineyard where it had somebody that would intercede for it. And I just tell you, I just think that's why that's one of the good reasons about being in the church. I walked the parking lot yesterday and and, and I prayed. And, and as your face came up, I pray for you. I pray for your family. I don't know that it makes it a difference, but I just believe I believe in the intercession. I believe that prayers, the, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Pray for your kids. The Bible said Job was an intercessor. Pray for your children. And if you don't think it makes a difference, why would you do it? And so we pray and we intercede. And the Lord said, I'll tell you, here's what I'm going to do. And Moses said, no, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lord. Wait, wait just a minute. Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians will hear about it. If you do that, you destroy them. The Egyptians are going to hear about it. By your power, you brought these people up from among them. And they're going to tell the inhabitants of the land about it. They've already heard that you, are, Lord, are with these people. And that you, Lord, have been seen face to face. They've heard that your cloud might circle that word, stays over them, and that you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. If Lord, think about it now. If you put all these people to death, leaving none alive, all the nations who've heard this report about you will say, well, the Lord wasn't able to bring these people in the land. He promised them on oath. Listen, he goes back to that oath. Remember, this is, not a, this is not a little something you said. You swore with an oath you were going to bring these people in this land. And, and, and so you couldn't do it, and so you slaughter them in the wilderness. Now may the Lord's strength be displayed just as you've declared. Now he said, I know you've got to deal with this. But I, I want to tell you, Lord, I know something about you. I've been with you a few days. The, the Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiving sin and rebellion. Now he doesn't leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes children, and that's been changed in the New Covenant. But in accordance with your great love, listen to his petition. Very simple, very direct, very plain. In accordance with your great love, forgive the sin of these people just as you have pardoned them from the time they left Egypt till now. This isn't the first sin rodeo they've had. And what does God say? 
It's immediate. It's not like, well, let me think about this over the weekend. No, the Lord replied, I have forgiven them just as you ask. I want to tell you, that's the kind of forgiveness I need in my life and you need. That's the kind of forgiveness I need to give others. And I ain't as good at it as God is. Oh, it was an old me. I didn't hear any amens, but I thought I heard uh, a grunt. I'm not as good at this as God is. But God immediately says, okay, okay, okay. I, I, I have forgiven them just as you ask. But that's not all. Here's this long word that says, okay, but I'll forgive them. They're pardoned. It's done. Just you ask. Nevertheless, now, I think the NIV misses the translation here. And there are a few times, I think, uh, that that happens. And, and because when you have revelation, you understand, you see things. If you don't have a revelation, something, you might skip over something. And so I like the way the King James reads this and most other translations. And, and I put it in your outline. The Lord says, I have pardoned according to thy word, but nevertheless, as truly as I live. That's God's way of saying, mark it down. I swear by me, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. And what that means to me is this. God is saying, you may not realize this, but I want a people who will represent me in the earth. And they are going to fill the earth with my glory. And if they're not it, I'm going to have me a people. I, you mark it down. All the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. And if these people won't do it, I'll get me a people who will. Because all the earth shall be filled. Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Heaven's filled with his glory. The earth isn't. Now there are moments where his glory is manifest, but God is saying, I want the earth to be filled with my glory. And, and, and so we jump over uh, to, to 1 Peter uh, where in 1 Peter 2, 9, he, he, we jump in the middle of his talking to us, the church, and he says, hey, by the way, but you are a chosen people. Or it says this way in the King James, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. And the word peculiar doesn't mean odd and strange, although I've met those folks too. It actually means purchased. The, the Greek word is peripiosis. It means purchased. You're a purchased people. You're a special people. Why? That you may declare the praises of, Circle, declare the praises, declare the praises. That this is why you are who you are, that you might declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Now remember, coming out of darkness into light is the transfer of the kingdom. Remember, Colossians 1.13 says he has translated you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So because you are now not in that kingdom of evil, but now you're in the kingdom of God. That's what we're talking about, is the kingdom of God. Now you're over here, your job is to declare his praises because he has taken you out of the, this kingdom and brought you in this kingdom of wonderful light. By the way, he says, once you weren't even a people, but now you are a people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. In other words, what I see here is you're the people. That's us, by the way, that's, that's us. That includes us not just the church that, uh, that he's talking to here or, or the people in his congregation. He's talking to the church. You're a chosen people. And our job is to fill the earth with his glory. So how do we do that? Now, uh, there, there's a little something I put in your outline I want you to get. This is, this is teaching. This is not all, uh, hey, how to win friends tomorrow and have a great day at work, okay? Uh, but this has changed your life, and we're not just here to go have a good day at work tomorrow. I want to. You want to. But we're here to bring his kingdom here, to establish and expand his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And so uh, here's, here's, I'm going to show you how, how we do it. First of all, I want you to understand, and put it in your outline, if you're at home, you can, this will probably come up. Glory. We talk about, everybody say glory. Oh, say it with, 
southern style. Glory. <laughs> Don't want to say glory. Listen, glory is not just something that comes from God to us. We talk about, Lord, let your glory fall. Lord, let your glory rest in this place. Well, let me tell you that glory, far more times in the scripture, doesn't talk about something that God brings to us. Rather, it's something that we give to God. We give God the glory. Give Him the glory. Psalms is full. Give glory to God. First Chronicles 16, give God the glory. Some let me say ascribe to the Lord glory. Give God the glory. Now, you can't give what you don't have. So where does this glory come from? And, and just without, I don't have a lot of time here, and, and, and this, I, don't know, I know some deep stuff. Think of yourself as a glory factory. It's kind of like praise. When you give God praise, where do you get it from? You've got a praise mechanism inside of you. You are capable of producing praise. And you know some people rarely use it. You can give praise. You give glory. Where does it come from? God gave you. you there's also a criticism factor in there too. Oh, come on now. There's a criticism factory and a praise factory inside. And some of us hadn't used the praise factory. We were more criticized. That's what they were doing here. They, they were criticizing. They said, God will take us. God will give us this land. God will give us victory. Let's hold it. God give us victory. God will give us victory. God. The whole, they don't start chanting that. They say, let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to Egypt. He brought us out here to kill us. He brought us out here to die. That's not the praise factory working. That's the criticism factory working. You understand? Where does that come from? It comes from we have the capacity to produce it. Now, here's the important thing. I want you to get this, okay? I'm going to say this probably ahead of time. Let me say this. I want you to lock this in. When you praise God in your praise factory, it's getting almost cool enough where we can do this now. You go outside on a cool night. Even the oldest of us like going out and going. Come on, come on. Don't act me like I'm the only one. What happens? Yeah, you see a little. It doesn't stay there long. But you can see your breath. Just It just produces a little fog, a little puff. That's what happens when you praise. A little puff of glory comes out. When you say, God's good. A little puff of glory is produced. And when all of us in the room say, God is good. You know, the Lord is, boy, the Lord's been good to me. Boy, the Lord just blessed me this week. What happens when we do that for 20 minutes? We fill the room with glory. Are you listening to me? We fill the room with glory. What happens when we do that all over the world? When people go about praising God all over the world, we fill our workplaces with glory. Now, I want to tell you, I'm, going to, I'm showing you how important this is. Um, Psalm 50, verse 23 says, Who so offereth praise glorifieth me. When you offer praise, when you bring your offering of praise, you're producing glory. You're giving glory to God. Now look at the model of heaven. Let me, um, I, hope you're, I hope you're listening. Take it. This, this is deep stuff today. I, I know this is not, again, it, it may not seem like extreme practical, but this is the church. This is who, this is who we are. What we sang last week, praise is what we do. Praise is what I do. And, and I want to show you today the difference, what I see as a difference between praise and worship, okay, and how we need to do both of them. And, I, there, and, and this is not like, well, this is the perfect line, and I've got the final word on it. There, there's, a, there's a blur in here, and I'm not suggesting that this is all 100% just exactly purely definable. But I want to show you today why both praise and worship, I want to show you how they're different to me and how both are needed. Both are needed in our service. We did both today. 
okay? I think. But we will if we had it. Um, uh, and, and by the way, anything I'm talking about, uh, Pastor Marcus, what a great uh, uh, person and leader you are and seasoned person, no, sincerely, seasoned person of God. And, and uh, we're, I'm, I'm blessed to have you in my life and we're blessed to have you in your row here. And, and any, what I'm saying about music today or the need for this it, it is not in any way, I'm not trying to send any message. I got a phone, we've talked and we've got a great communication. So I'm not trying to get up here and criticize the music style or choice or, or song selection today. That's, that's not at all. So that's, that's not it. But I am going to examine a little of that to kind of show you some differences. Okay. Uh, so Revelation 4 says, after this I look. So we're going to have heaven on earth. Let's see a little what it looks like when worship is going on in heaven. Let's see what, the, what it looks like around the throne. After this I looked, and, and there before him was a door standing open in heaven and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said come up here and I'll show you what must take place after this at once I was in the spirit and before me there was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it and the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby brilliant colors a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne um I love color. I, we got a little bit behind us here. I, I love color. I'd like to add some more in here. Just uh, color is, there's no, a rainbow. I, I hate the fact that the world's try to take, uh, and sometimes, someplace successfully, taken what is a beautiful symbol of God's covenant and made it something that is anti God in, in the LGBTV or whatever it is. Um, you, you, you know where you understand what I'm saying. The rainbow is a beautiful thing, and I refuse to give it up because th that's 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 God's symbol. That's that reminds me of His covenant. The rainbow is a beautiful, and and and, and that's 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 a there's a bunch of color in a rainbow, <clears throat> okay, and and that's what's around the throne. When we get to heaven. There's going to be some color like this. The Bible said. Uh, the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper ruby and a rainbow uh, shone like an emerald encircled the throne circling the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders they were dressed in white had crowns of gold in their, on their heads from the throne came flashes of lightnings rumbles and peals of thunder it got you know, loud and in front of the throne seven lamps were blazing the, the light was going and there, these are the seven spirits of God also in front of the throne there was what looked like a sea of glass clear as crystal in the center around the throne were four living creatures. They covered their eyes in front and back. The first living creature was like a lion, second one like an ox, third was like a, uh, a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. And each of the four living creatures had six wings and, and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Now listen, forget what the creatures look like. I want you to notice what's happening. Day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy. Ho you know why heaven is filled with glory? Because the glory factory doesn't stop. Day and night they don't stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty which, who was and is and is to come. Listen, what's the next thing? Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to Him and sits on the throne who lives forever and ever, this is what they're doing. They're, they're saying this, and when they say this, they're giving glory. The 24 elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne, and they worship Him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne, and they say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for You created all things, and by Your will they were created and have their being. Revelation 15 and 8. We're just taking some snapshots of, of what the throne room and this worship center looks like. And it says, And the temple was filled with smoke. Say, Let's read this together. And the temple, come on, read it with me. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God. Let's just stop there. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God. I want you to see that. I just want you to see that the physical smoke. Now, uh, let me let me say this to you. 
We don't have a smoke machine in here. I hear people say, well, I don't like those haze machines. It's, it's okay. It reminds me of heaven. Our, our stage isn't set up for... The reason you have all these lights that shine down is not to light the stage. The haze picks up the light. You know, light's got to find something to reflect off of, and that haze causes them to look like little pencils of light. And so I, we're not going to have that in this building. I can not imagine that because it just it isn't designed for that. But there's nothing wrong. Heaven looks like this. I just want to tell you, that's, they got a haze machine in heaven, only it's called a glory factory. And, and, and so what we're doing is just kind of reproducing with lights and color a little of what it's like there, minus the lightning and thunder. Okay? So, but the, the, so I, I look at it and I say, holy smokes. Holy smokes. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God, from his power, and no man could enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. All right, let's look at one more uh, glimpse into the throne room. Isaiah 6. And the first few verses there. And I'm just moving by so much I want to stop and say as I read these scriptures. Um, and, and I've got to move fast because I've got a few things else I really want to say here today. In the, king that king, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne. The train of his robe filled the temple. Above him was seraphim, it's an angelic being, one of the orders of angels, each with six wings. With two they covered their faces, two they covered their feet, with two they were flying, and they call, were calling out one to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Okay? Either this is a, a, a saying of that mandate that's fulfilled, uh, or it, it's this is what's going to happen. It's a prophetic word. It's going to happen. The whole earth. This is what's happening here in heaven. But there, heaven gets excited every time a sinner repents. Why? Because... The kingdom of darkness is weaker and the kingdom of light is stronger. This is a battle and we're in the, we're in the, we're in the, the earth is the place of tension and conflict. And, and so what we do is fill the earth with, with its glory. And so what, look what they're doing. And they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And at the sound of their voices, the door post and threshold shook and at the sound of their voices, the temple was filled with smoke. I wish I had a, a, a smoke machine in here just for today, just to get the illustration. Because every time they said, holy, 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 it produced a puff of glory. And the place was filled with what the writer could only term as smoke. It's some kind of haze. There's some other beautiful things there to look at in that chapter, but I'm going to leave that alone. And I want to go to the book of Malachi, chapter 3, jumping around a lot today. Some of us only think Malachi talks about tithe, and it does talk about it, and it's an important thing. But I love this passage, Malachi 3 and verse 16. Then those who feared and loved the Lord. Anybody fear the Lord? Anybody here love the Lord? Those who feared and loved the Lord spoke often of Him to each other. We're not just talking to Him and saying, God, you're good. We're saying to Philip, Philip, God's good. In fact, uh, in, in some of our circles, I think someone did a song on back there and and brought this out where, where one would say, God is good. And the other person would say, all the time. And then he says, and then he says, God is good. God is, what's happening? When we, what happens when you get on Facebook? And, and, and like Barbara did yesterday, said, posted a, the goodness of God song. Said, I just find myself singing. You know what? I just so happened I was singing that same song about the same time. And, 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 you know, we're talking about the goodness of God. I want to tell you, when you share that, even electronic, it's almost like you're producing a little puff of glory smoke. I, I know, I, it's, I'm not saying we should never get on there and rant. I get on there and rant too. I rant more than I should. 
Sometimes nobody listens to me but me, and sometimes I don't even listen to me. I'm tired of hearing me rant. But how much better it is when those who feared and loved the Lord spoke of Him often to each other. What happens when that takes place? Well, I think we're producing glory, but he had a book of remembrance drawn up in which he recorded the names of those who feared him and loved to talk, think about him. And so when I say, Lee, you know, God is, boy, God's been good to me. Glory cloud. The Lord notices that. The Lord notices that. Now, Worship is an intimate time with God. Worship is an intimate time with God. If I want God, if I want the intimacy of His Holy Spirit, if I want to be, I just want to be where you are. I just want to be with you. What if I've been saying bad things about God all day? What if I've been, what if I wanted my wife to snuggle up to, honey, just come snuggle up close to me. But she was in another room when I told Lee, I hope Ramsey can cook because Jennifer can't cook a thing. She burns every toast. She tries to heat water and she overheats it. And, and I tell you, don't tell her that. Lord, she never uses the oven. I don't know. We got the thing. I tell you, one time I had some money I wanted to hide, I put it in the oven. I said, that's a safe place for it. She won't find it there. Lord, I wish she'd get some different makeup. I hate that makeup she's got. I tell you, she needs to wear something. I tell you that, an old barn looks good with some paint on it. And then I walk in the other room and say, honey, come snuggle up. She said, I've been hearing you talk. Huh? You hear, you, you, you listening to me? Some of us want to get intimate with God. Oh, Lord, I just want to feel your spirit here. But you haven't been saying anything good to him. Well, listen, when you go around saying, you know, God's been good to me. Oh, he's been better to me than I deserve. Oh, I just thank you, Lord, for his goodness. Marcus, God, God has blessed me. I don't know why he blessed me this week, but I tell you, he just blessed me in ways I couldn't understand. I know I don't deserve it. It's just the hand of God. Then I come into his presence. The Lord says, I've been listening to you. I've been, in fact, I've been taking some notes. Book of Remembrance written those what. I want to tell you, I'm going to get me a can of amens here and open it up because that's some good stuff right there. That's some good stuff right there. Okay. Think about this. Think about praise. I, I want to uh, give me just a few minutes. I've I'm, 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 I'm got to finish this segment right here. Okay. Think about praise as being horizontal, vertical. I'll say that different in just a moment. Horizontal, vertical. Horizontal, vertical. And worship is being vertical. Okay, worship's you to God. It's you and God. I, I don't need you in my worship. You can watch me. You can watch me as I pour out the oil on the, on His feet, and that, and you're gonna be blessed. That's an act of worship. But generally, my worship is a little more private. It's me and it's me and Him. I mean, it's Lord, and, and, and it's praises about God. Worship is to God. And again, that's not a perfect line, but that's, that's pretty close. Because what happens is, is that when we praise Him, we're talking to others about how good God is. He hears it. He's blessed. But we're not saying, God, you're good. We're saying, God is good. God is good. I, you get blessed by that. I get blessed. We feed off that, and, and, we, and we get moved to more praise, and God's listening, which sets up the moment of worship. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns, and in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. In other words, we teach each other in part with the songs we sing. We admonish one another with the hymns we sing. It's a noble thought, and, and I've said it probably before, and, and I know you've heard it said. Praise God. Y'all listen, but I'm... When I sing, I'm singing for audience of one. We're performing for audience of one. No, we're not. No, we're not. 
When we sing about God, we're singing to one another about how good God is. It, there is a horizontal part in praise. We sing today. Uh, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Now, that's see, this is kind of a blend. This is one of the blend songs. Our God is great. Our God. And then we turn and say, God, you are higher than any other. Yeah, that's praise and worship. Um, one similar, our God is an awesome God. He reigns over heaven and earth with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. We're not singing here. We're telling one another. We're like the people of Malachi 3.16. We're, we're fearing and loving the Lord. Um, the other song I sang just a moment ago. I just want to be where you are. Living daily. That's not a praise song. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm singing to him now, okay? I'm talking, I'm talking to you now. See, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking to you. I just want to be where you are. Living daily in your presence. Take me to the place where you are. I just want to be with you. Or the old hymn says it this way. Just a closer walk with thee granted jesus is my plea daily walking close to thee let it be sing it dear lord let it be i am weak but thou art strong this this is us talking to him then sometimes we sing a, a, a hymn that's it's it's about him what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on, come on, the everlasting, sing along at home. Oh, what a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting, sing about him. Leaning, oh yes, we're leaning on Jesus, I'm leaning. So secure from all alarm, that one. Leaning on Jesus, leaning, I am leaning on the everlasting arms. Verse 3. I don't know, we always skipped over 2. Well, or 1, 2, and 4, we always skipped over 3, wasn't it? Okay, what happens is, if you notice, generally, generally we start off with... Um, Generally, we start off with a praise song, and we're talking about, I am blessed, I am blessed. It's, it's nothing intimate, but we're just, we're just reminding each other about how good God's been. And then we move into something that is just, you know, sometimes, sometimes a, a praise song, it, it, it kind of gets a, a slow, and how great thou art's one of those. It's singing to him, but it's just something about it. When other people sing, how great thou art. I mean, O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. And you know the rest of it. And then sings my soul, my Savior. It's not, it's, it's, it's not just intimate. Something about it just goes out this way too. But we're all kind of brought in in that. It's just, it's. Let's see, sometimes you have that blur, but we're singing to him. And, and then yesterday, we'll finish right here. And, and hey Josh, come up. Let's, let's just strum the guitar on this one right here. Because I don't know the song that well. Because some of these songs, listen, listen to me. Some of these songs, we talk about God, and I love it when it'll pivot. And then we'll talk to him, just changing a word or two. And that's, that's what goodness of God does. That little song you were talking about, it says, All my life he has been faithful. All my life he has been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Won't you stand with me and we'll try that. Give me a key. Oh. 
all my life you have been faithful. That just, I gotta go up for it. All my life he has been so, so good. All my life he has been faithful. Could you get another key on that? Sing of the goodness of God. I can hardly sing of the goodness of God, man. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life he has been. All my life he has been. He has been faithful. Let's think about him now. All my life. All my life he has. He has been so, so good. Got the he up there if you can. Uh -huh. Every breath that I am able. I will sing of the goodness. Find another key. One more key. One of them somewhere will work. And after we've been singing about the goodness of God, then we turn it to Him and we say, All my life you have been faithful. All my life, Lord. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. Lord, sing to him. All my life you have been faithful. Ignore what's up there and sing it to him. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of your goodness, oh God. Yes, I will sing. Yes, I will sing of your goodness, oh God. Oh, I will sing of your goodness, oh God. Long. I want you, I want to encourage you this week to praise him. Praise him. Talk to other people about how good God is. Remember when I go ahead, you turn and say something good about God? You fill in the room with his glory. Now when you talk to him, he said, I, I heard what you said in the other room. You didn't know I was listening, but I was listening. The Spirit embraces us. And we feel received, we feel embraced. encourage you this week, take moments to sing songs. Everybody sings in the shower, don't you? Get in your little place. Go out on the deck. Take a walk out to the woods or by the pond and just sing. Sing about Him. Sing to Him. And let God let's fill the earth with His glory. And then when we get the glory in the room, let's just marinate in his presence. Let's just, let's just let his spirit just cover us. Like that cloud rested on the people, let it rest on you. Let it, hey, listen, if, God, if God's spirit rests, if his glory cloud rests on your family, it's hard to fuss when the glory cloud's covering you. Jesus, thank you for those people in this room today who love you, who fear your name. Bless them this week. Father, you have been faithful. You've been so, so good. And we thank you for it. 
May your kingdom come. May your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brother Harold, come on. I'm, I'm about to dismiss people. I'm not taking offering. Sister Ruby. Sit back there praying. Lord, please. We've got to pay the bills. We've got to pay the bills. Thank you for your faithfulness. Listen, online, if you want to join with us, uh, there's a giving link to, to, so you can do that. And if this ministry is blessed, and then you will be part of it as we continue to, to, to do what we're doing, seeing the expanse of his kingdom. May his kingdom come and his will be done in your life as well. You can join us for that now. All my life. Lord, bless the, bless the gift and giver as the offerings received today, Lord. You've been faithful. We thank you for it. All my life, I've watched you work. Receive now and bless the, the people who give. Receive their gift in Jesus' name. Amen. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God, I will sing, I will sing of your goodness, oh God. Well, I sing a lot more today than I normally do from the start to the finish. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Let's have a great week. Be blessed. Go and grow in His grace. And by the way, we did not get moved this week. It's been a moving experience, but we're not done with it yet, okay? Uh, it'll be, praise God, by the grace of God, it'll be this week. Amen. You're dismissed. We love you.